Yesterday, I made two fundamental CSS mistakes. I'm going to tell you all about them so you don't make those same mistakes yourself. What's up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And I've recently been working on a build in public project called Dev Yearbook. And this is basically going to be a way for people to connect after conferences that they attend with people that they met, send messages, and pictures, etc. While I'm doing that, I came across a couple of issues uh, in my or me forgetting my understanding of CSS and how it works, or just forgetting to go back to the basics of how CSS works. So the project that I was working on, it's using a framework uh, with React called Remix. If you'd like to learn more about Remix and want to see some more content about that on the channel, let me know in the description or in the content. You can't change the description. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm planning on doing some content around that. So that example is using Remix and it's using Tailwind CSS. And it may be a little bit more complicated for a demo than it needs to be, but I will show you that at the end of this video. But I'll start with a super basic example inside of CodePen as a bare bones example of what we're talking about. Then I'll show you the more complicated example in the actual Remix code. All right, so first off, these are relatively beginner mistakes. So if you're already comfortable with these, feel free to move on. But the two things that I, misremembered, misunderstood, or just wasn't thinking. I don't know. Uh, one is specificity in CSS. So as, as you have so many different styles that might affect an element, which one of those takes precedence? Which one is more specific? We'll talk about specificity. And then we'll talk about the impact that transform scale has on elements, or the inverse of that is the impact that it doesn't have that you might expect it to have. So I've got this very basic code pen here that I want to start with to show these examples. Again, this is about as basic as it gets. So let's talk about first uh, the order of classes and how they affect the visibility in this case of this item. So inside of here, I've got a div with two classes. Uh, one is hidden and one is visible. And you might say, yes, those, those sound like opposites. Yes, they're intended to be opposites for this reason. So inside of here, I've got uh, those classes defined inside of CSS. So hidden calls display of none or adds that property. Visible adds display of blocks. So this is a way uh, display none is taking that completely out of the DOM. Display block is now putting that back in the DOM. So ask yourself first, you can pause the video, you can copy the example if you want. But uh, what's gonna happen? Is this div actually going to show or be invisible? Okay, so hopefully you paused and did that. So I'm gonna uncomment this part so that we can apply those two classes, hidden and visible. And this thing is now staying visible. Now I ask you, what happens if I now move this uh, invisible or hidden class after visible? Pause the video maybe and you see that it's still being shown. And this is where, I, I don't know, I get, like I know these rules and I just completely wasn't thinking, but my thought in the code that I was working on is that this hidden should take precedence over visible because it's listed after the visible class. So whatever inside of this class list is listed last would take precedent. But that's not the case. It takes precedence based on the order of them defined in CSS. So as you can see, visible is defined after hidden. If we were to flip these, if we were to move this up above, then you'll see that this thing should go away because now a hidden is going to take precedence because it is defined after the visible class. If you've been doing CSS for any amount of time, you probably already know this and you're probably looking at me like, what were you thinking? I did the same thing. I even posted in my Discord, why would this CSS not work and then realize for a very obvious reason, because that's not how CSS works. So going back to specificity, if you want more details, I'll put a link to the W3 schools document. I love W3 schools. So you start with uh, your inline styles, then you go to IDs, then you go to classes, pseudo classes, attribute selectors, then you go to uh, general elements and pseudo elements themselves. But remember that those things take precedence within the same class over each other based on the order in which they're defined in CSS. I'll show you the example of this using Remix and Tailwind CSS here in a second. Now, the other example that I have is about uh, what happens when we transform scale something to zero to 100 to uh, 0.25. So let's start with adding a border to this whole thing. So I'll add this border and then we'll go back and uh, get rid of, or we'll just reorder these to where it's visible again. All right, so now we should see this box. Now what's gonna happen to this box if I were to uh, apply the class of small, which then scales this element 
down to 0.25 of its original size. Now keep in mind, this is inside of a div uh, that now is visible and it's inside of that div that has the border. We actually could, we could just apply the border here and that should do the exact same thing, I believe, there we go. Cool, so this is the exact same thing. So what's gonna happen to this border or to that rectangle as I scale this down? Again, you probably already know this if you've done CSS for any amount of time, but let's take a look. So let's uncomment or comment this back in, let it refresh. And you see that the text here got really, really small, about a quarter of the original size based on 0.25, but the box here stayed exactly the same height uh, and it's gonna take up the width regardless because of um, uh, the P tag being a block element, but it kept the same height. And I completely forgot about the fact that transform scale will scale the individual item down, but it doesn't change the flow of the DOM. It doesn't change what is seen in the actual DOM. And there's a great, um, I can link to this too, although it's not super useful more than what I just said. There's a great stack overflow question that asks exactly this. CSS transform scale does not change DOM size. And we get down to the answer. Transforms don't affect the layout or more precisely the box model of an element. They are purely cosmetic which coincidentally also means that if we were to make this be 2.25, that means this text now should show this as bigger inside of that same box. It's actually hidden now for an interesting reason. Uh, so what we can do is add a margin left of 600 pixels or so to try to bring that back into being visible. Uh, so there it is visible. So we can see that this thing is bigger. And if we were to bump this up even to 5.25, you see that that thing is gonna to continue to get bigger. We may need to add more margin, uh, a thousand or not that many, a thousand, not 10,000. There we go, so here it is. So you can see that this thing is getting bigger and bigger while that box still stays the same. So the transform scale uh, changes that element, but it doesn't change the flow of the DOM and the size of that element in terms of the DOM. So anyway, those are the two things that I had a little bit of issue with. So. Let's take a look at this in the example uh, inside of Remix. So this is a newsletter component. And basically what I wanna do is show one of two things. I wanna show either the successfully subscribed message or I wanna show the actual form itself. Now this is pretty basic. Here's the sign up for updates. You put in the email. Uh, this is, I just got it hard coded to respond yes right now. And something's not working and I'm trying to figure out why. So two things, let's, uh, let's look at first the uh, amount of space that is above this sign up for updates. So uh, there is the uh, sign up for updates, this block. Above that, there's this thing, which isn't showing that it takes up any height, but watch this. If I were to delete this thing, that thing goes away completely. So the issue with that, I can undo this as well. Uh, the issue with that is that even though I have a scale of zero applied to uh, this div, that's gonna do a transform scale of zero. That's gonna shrink all that stuff down to nothing, but the DOM flow, the size of this thing in the DOM still stays the same. So I have this awkward bit of space up here. So it took me a while to figure out why is there this extra bit of space? And I completely blanked about the fact that that doesn't change the size of this element in the DOM. Now, the other thing is if you notice after I do this, and this is hard coded, it's not doing email validation, it's just saying success right now. Uh, that goes away, but the next thing doesn't come in and the question is why? And the reason is that inside of here, I define opacity of zero and scale of zero. Now these are tailwind CSS classes. You can probably imagine what they do. They set the opacity to zero and they set the scale to zero for this element. And then depending on if I have successfully submitted this form, I then apply these visible classes. Now these visible classes have all of these things, including opacity 100 and scale 100. So my non-CSS brain was like, why is this not working? Because I see that these classes are being applied after these classes. I think getting into React and different frameworks just takes you away from some of those fundamentals sometimes. So I, I recommend a reset occasionally to just get back into basic fundamentals. But so if we look at this inside of here, we can actually see that, uh, where is this? I guess it's this one. Yeah, so there's this element right here. Inside of here, you see we have the classes applied correctly. We have opacity zero, scale zero, which is the initial stuff. And then we layer on top opacity 100 and scale 100. Again, you would think that would work, but if we look down below and come down to scale, you can see that the scale class is, the scale of zero is taking precedence over scale of 100. Now this is interesting because this comes from Tailwind 
And we don't necessarily know in what order these Tailwind classes are defined. Now we could go and look inside of the documentation potentially and find it that way. But I also realized that there is inside of this directory, a Tailwind CSS file, which is getting generated uh, every time we do a build of this uh, kind of real time. So if we search for, uh, which are we looking for opacity or scale? Scale. If we search for scale of zero, this class is defined after this class, which means scale of zero now is going to take precedence. Interestingly though, the opacity of zero is defined before the opacity of 100. So it's, those aren't super consistent. And I don't know, I don't know if that's a tailwind thing or if it's, I don't know what all that's based on, but I can see clearly in here inside of the CSS file, which one is going to take precedence if both of those are applied. Now I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to go and do a reset on this, uh, get reset off hard and go back to what I ended up doing, which is basically toggling now between two different sets of classes. So either I want to display the visible classes or the hidden classes. And there's some interesting things I do in here with, um, making sure that the visible thing is invisible at first and then doing a set timeout to set the visible classes so that you see the transition to go from one to the other. If you have questions about any of this stuff, let me know. This is why I started with the most basic example in CodePen earlier. And then I'm gonna go back to my tailwind and I'm just gonna hard code this to return uh, success so that you can see this. So let's go back to it. Uh, we'll type in a fake email address. We sign up, that thing goes away. Then the success message now has a delay and then fades in with the cool effect there. So my two ridiculous mistakes inside of CSS, but I wanted to share that to be transparent that like no matter how much experience you have, these sort of things happen, you just kind of lose your train of thought and don't realize to go back to the basics. So uh, I'm curious if you have any fun stories about things that you messed up in the past, let me know in the comments uh, below. If you have any additional questions, make sure to share those as well. I thought this was a fun one. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next video.